Okay, it has been a bit since we've done it. Every time we take a week off, I have to basically find that inner Shonen Archive voice again. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm it back up. <laughs> exactly, damn it. I was about to start and then you immediately stopped me. <laughs> I'm like a train. You, have to <laughs> you can't just stop me mid all. I'll be completely destroyed. Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wokey and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm so glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching absolutely everything from Shonen Jump uh, anime-wise that is available to us in English um, throughout the history of it, starting with Gintama as our first series, uh, finishing season one of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, and going, going on a bi-weekly basis Jujutsu Kaisen and Kuroko's Basketball skipped a week last week because both me and Zen decided to just we should just both be super busy with work at the same time <laughs> yeah well it was nice that it was at the same time at least yeah a lot of yeah. times it's not at the same time at least mm. this time it was like a mutual yeah thing. a mutual just completely swamped at work I'm still swamped at work which is why I sound uh, half delusional so if I say anything out of whack, I apologize. I have not been sleeping very much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the show. And we plan to do this until the end of time itself. The end of our lives as, it's as they stand. I decide to make a 2,000 word tweet. Or eventually I just leave Zen because he picked uh, Taco as the thing to leave behind everything. Which I still <laughs> have not forgiven. I understand that you come from the <laughs> south, so you had to, you couldn't pick mac and cheese, but there's still a part of me that's like I, that. That still that leaves like the entire remaining bevy of of Mexican cuisine. It's not just the taco. <laughs> I'm just saying. To be fair, I shouldn't feel racial because we didn't even invent the taco. It's really more we co-opted the taco. <laughs> But I stand regardless. And the other day, yeah, whatever, I can stand here forever. Let's actually talk about the quality. So the four things that are picked on this item were taco, mac and cheese, fries, and steak. None of these things make sense together. <laughs> it feels like someone... Yeah, it's it's a weird, like, get rid of this because they're, they're not even, like, really the same kind of food. Like, with tacos, you'd think it'd be, like, burgers and, and pizza. Like, those are yeah. the same kind of level of food quality. Yes, exactly. Like you, a steak is a full ass meal. Like if you took away a steak from a steak meal, you'd have nothing. But if you took away the fries from a steak meal, you'd go. At least I have the steak still. You know, it's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, <laughs> just doesn't make any sense. But I digress on that. Um, and today we're going to be talking about Kintama, which we're going to be going through the. Ryu Gojo arc? That's not how you say that at all. That's Ryu Gojo. How do you Ryu say? Ryu Gojo, I think. Ryu, I think Gojo? Ryu Gojo. We're gonna go with that. We're gonna go for that for this one. They say it a whole bunch, but I'm not the greatest with Japanese words in general. It's not a bit. I legitimately, my brain can't handle them. That's why I say uh, pecan instead of Pycon, which is or Pycohan, or whatever the fuck his actual name is supposed to be in, said. In Japanese, it's Pycohan. In English, it's Pycon. Yeah, I, I call him Pecan, which, which, was, really, yeah, which was really great, because I forget, I think Legends, actually, Dragon Ball Legends, recent, not recently, a couple years ago, did a video where they made, where they said, they said Pecan like I do, and everyone fucking jumped down their throat, and I was just standing there going like, <laughs> well, 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 let's, let's back up a bit, <laughs> let's let them let him cook. Let, Let him, him cook. cook. That's exactly how I felt. I felt like I finally had an ally in it. <laughs> but no, everyone completely shit talked them in the way that they said it. And I had a flashback to my old podcast days where I was also shit on for saying uh, his name incorrectly. So, yes, we're going to be going through this arc. Um, it's four episodes, so it's going to be a very easy week this week. Uh, for Gintama, that is. So, Zen, are you ready? Yes. Then let us begin with episode 115, just before the start of Summer Vacation, is the most fun. Go ahead. So, uh, they are, the group are on the beach, and uh, these girls are complaining um, that there's like a suspicious person. They're looking for Kagura, and she's like beating someone up. They're, 
I think they say they, that she's probably looking for turtles. Um, mm. And then it turns out that she's beating the shit out of someone that looks like a guy in a turtle costume, but he's actually a turtle. Um, I want to say Amaro, but that's not right. Amanto? Amanto is the right word, yes. Yeah. Um, and, and she's like... Doing- She's doing it for Krillin as well as she's yes, beating the she shit. Yes, she tells him that was that one was for Krillin while she's kicking the shit out of him. Um, they, he's accused of videotaping women in their bathing suits, and he's like, "No, I was just look. I was looking at kelp. I wasn't doing that. I was just videotaping kelp." And then Gintoki's like, "All right, well then, let me see the the camera then." And then it'll be, and he like makes up a bunch of really obvious excuses. He's like, uh, no, I didn't do it. You're invading my privacy. <laughs> and he was, in fact, recording all of the women in their swimsuits. Um, so they all beat him up, and then they decide that they're going to take him back to Ryugu Palace uh, instead of taking him to the police. Uh, they end up seeing this giant boat when they're on the this ship because they're trying to take him home, and he's like, you can't. You can't turn me in because my wife has eggs and they'll all die if she gets too stressed. Um, so they see this giant cruise liner and Otai and Kube are on it with another turtle man who is like um, like golden. Yeah, like a shiny golden turtle man. Golden and has chest hair. Yeah. Um and then there is like a big battleship, and Hasegawa is on it. I don't remember <laughs> why. The, oh, the reason uh, is is that uh, because so this is all based off of the the uh, Japanese folktale where someone saves the turtle, and then they get taken to Ryugu Palace. Um, Hasegawa is a, is the only person who did not save the turtle. He was saved by the turtle because he was gonna kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> And so the turtle wants to take him to Ryugo Palace so that he has a reason to live. <laughs> uh, and then Katsura appears riding a turtle that looks like... Uh, Gamera. Gamera, yeah. And, and starts fighting the battleship turtle. Uh, and then in the chaos of the battle, Shimpachi washes up on shore and he sees a skeleton in a cave. And he's like, oh my god, this is going to be the worst summer vacation ever. But then he realizes that he he's alone on this deserted island after he has this like horrifying flashback or whatever that he's been trapped on this island for his whole life. Mm-hmm. So he's like an old man now. Uh, then he wakes up and realizes that that wasn't the case. So he's running on the sand on this island and he's like, "I've I've learned how to think positive." And he he strips naked and he's like, "I've I've taken down the mental walls that force you to be aloof and cold and the real world and." Because he thinks he's completely alone, and then it, he finds Hasegawa also doing that, and so they get embarrassed <laughs> because they're not alone. And then there's a giant string of them all doing embarrassing things, like they find Kintoki practicing the Kamehameha, and he's like, ah, oh, it doesn't work. Damn it. And then they find him, and then they find Otai singing some song, a, a Japanese song, I assume. I don't know yeah, what it is. A very, apparently, I would assume like the version of like finding someone, catching someone singing Backstreet Boys to themselves. That's what I took it as. That's what I okay. understood it as. Yeah, it, it was some Japanese song. Yeah, because um, the, the way they Shimpachi, you know, a lot of people like them. They, it kind of feels like it's one of those bands where it's like you don't, unless you are very confident with your friend group, you don't want to be seen by randos singing their song. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Uh, they also find Kyube, who is drawing an ice cream in the sand, but then it gets hit by water, so it looks like poop instead of ice cream. And uh, they jump into like in front of the waves to try to defend it, and then they're embarrassed by that. Uh, and then Kagura makes some other Japanese reference. She's like, "There must be a the castle in the clouds up there." From from a Ghibli movie. And that was movie. her embarrassing thing. Yeah, it was like there must be someone from Castle in the Sky. I want to say, and then she gets embarrassed. It was like everyone thinks that when they see a giant cloud in the sky. Yeah. And then Katsura is uh, pissing an SOS into the sand. Um, and then he looks up at a cloud and he thinks that it must be a crystallized version of some Japanese news anchor up there. <laughs> um, this string of what the fuck he does on this island. <laughs> yeah, so... just like the most ridiculous. Like, So first he pisses the SOS into the sand and then he defends it 
to stop it from getting washed away in the exact same way that Kyube defended the ice cream, yeah. but half of it gets washed away just like the ice cream did. And so then he's like, I, I, I ran out of piss. <laughs> Who else needs the piss? <laughs> and Kentucky's like, why does it have to be done with piss? I don't understand. Also, how much and he then, peed uh, the SOS already? <laughs> he already yeah, was pissing already done. so much. <laughs> yeah, Kentucky's like, how did you have this much piss? <laughs> um... So then they decide that they're they need to make a leader, and so then they're like, okay, we need to pick a leader to then pick who is the leader. We need to make a leader who then becomes the one who appoints the leader, and they keep going around in circles until finally Shinpachi's like, no, stop that. We're not going to do that. So they divide up into three teams, which is the uh, or no four teams: the food team, the exploration team, the shelter team, and the curtain team, because. <laughs> Kagura made a very elaborate way to tell Hasegawa to kill himself. Because <laughs> she's like, you should be in charge of the curtains. And he's like, why would I do that? There's no curtains here. And she goes, no, we're closing the curtains on your life. <laughs> and then Katsura tells him to be on the curtains team. Um, he ends up catching a bunch of fish, but they determine that they can't start a fire because they don't have anything to start a fire with. They don't have a lighter or anything like that, because he lost his uh, lighter in the ocean because he was saving his sunglasses. Um, so Otai takes his sunglasses and then smashes them with a rock and then just has a book of matches that she uses to light them <laughs> on fire. Um, and then Katsura, Gintoki, and Kagura end up bumping into this weird box in the woods. Uh... Katsura abs accidentally touches it and it shoots a smoke out that turns him and Gintoki old and Gintoki rescues Kagura at the last minute by pushing her out of the way. And yeah, and then it's revealed that they turn old because of it. Yeah, they turn into to old men. Yes. Okay. So 115. I need to find... Okay. So yes, this entire story I need to I need to look up just to make sure that I got it right. This entire um arc is based off of uh Yurashima Taro, which is the old Japanese fairy tale about the guy who visits Ryogo Palace underneath the water and then he visits it for so long he whoa whoa, whoa what a moment. Do you hear that? No. Oh, what? All right, all right then. I figured it out. My window was open, so probably a bunch of people heard me screaming like a maniac. But it's okay because I also heard someone else screaming like a maniac. So it all works out in this place, <laughs> in this apartment complex. It's all right. Anyway, what was I saying? It's all based off of this uh, folk tale where he goes off and then he goes to Ryuga Palace, and then he, when he's going there, he is given a box, and so when he returns back to the human world time has changed around him and the world is no longer what he is and then when he opens the box he turns old because that held the it basically like made his life caught up to him and i forget what the, the specific story's lesson is supposed to be about because i only know very tangentially and that's only because i watch a lot of anime and read a lot of manga there you hear about this story from time to time yeah, I just want to say that's what this one is based off of. So it was kind of fun to see some of the th different variations of it, like the turtles uh, being so <laughs> weird. Like they make reference over the fact that because the turtle that they get to give them to Ryuga Palace and that I think that's also what she's doing in the beginning because Kagura is like, he says like, oh, she's probably looking for a turtle so they can go to Ryuga Palace and have a fun time. And then she actually does end up fighting a turtle from that. But he also seemed like to be the worst turtle they could find because the ones that ev every other turtle introduced afterwards is like ten times better than all of them. <laughs> uh, but I also really liked it because it also set up the gag with uh, Katsura. Katsura in this entire arc, by the way, is just like, he doesn't have Elizabeth and yet it feels like he's got more crazy energy than he's had in any other arc <laughs> up until this yeah, point. Yeah, he's like unhinged in this little arc. <laughs> Yeah, he really is. Uh, but the the reveal of him being on camera and then he's on, he has the completely wrong fairy tale guy with him. He doesn't have a t he doesn't have a um, uh, he doesn't have a turtle. He has Momotaro, which is a completely different Japanese fairy tale. And, <laughs> and then when he says like I'm, we're going here, it is it's from Journey to the West. It's like a complete. He's like mixing up every single fairy tale that you can imagine. 
He's like, you're not even in the right boat. Like, what the hell are you doing here? I thought that was very funny. I also really like the gag of Gorse again at the end, where he's just doing everyone's embarrassing thing all at the same time. Uh, everything except for the the doing naked and the doing the Kamehameha. But his just like weird like assortment of stuff that he was doing was really funny to me. Uh, I really liked how Hasegawa goes into here, because they just say straight up, like, <laughs> they really lean, lean into Hasegawa's, like, depression. <laughs> Which is really funny, the way that he's like, oh yeah, he found me, I was just, you know, I was jumping, this turtle saved me, and now we're gonna go to Ryuga Palace. <laughs> and, <laughs> and even when the, when the captain is, like, the, uh, fighting Gamera, he's like, no, it has to be Hasegawa that goes there. I need to show him that there's a reason to live. <laughs> <laughs> that he's good to continue on. Um, that was funny to me. Um, all the embarrassment stuff, especially because uh, QB's is also. I, th- there's a lot of things going on with QB in this one. They seem to start going a little bit more into some of the little bit like really silly stuff that they have. Like they get embarrassed over some really weird. Like there's a, a line I think in the next one where they talk about like microwaves. And they get very embarrassed about it, but this one was them being really proud of the little ice cream drawing that they had. <laughs> and that was en- enough to try and protect it from the wave, but it didn't matter. And then they got embarrassed because uh, someone caught them doing it. But he's like, you clearly wanted us to see the drawing that you made in the sand. You were very proud of it. Uh, I like that. Um, I did like when Shimpachi actually goes through the story of um, uh, Ataro himself because he actually turns old and you get to see him in a world where um, none of the other odd jobs people survive so he's just by himself. And I think that actually comes into play with some of the other stuff that they talk about in the arc itself. So it's kind of nice to see it here for a bit. And it actually feels like they actually take it pretty seriously up until it reveals that, like, oh, no, he's, he's just dreaming. So it's fine. That, that didn't really happen. That's not where this <laughs> specific arc is going. But they do reveal that... Uh... And though, funny enough, he's the only one that doesn't turn old. But you only get old Shinpachi for this way. Because everyone else you get to see as an old person. Yeah, everyone else does. Or... Yeah, no, Kyume does too, huh? Yeah, she yeah. goes, she turns really tiny. Yeah, she does. <laughs> it's a really <laughs> funny scene with Kagura where they're super tiny. Uh, but he's the only one because actually being a tiny old person runs in in her family. <laughs> if you think about back to the oh, arc. that's right, yeah, her uh, her, her, her dad is super tiny. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I thought it was funny. It also was funny with Gitoki. Dad. We'll we'll talk about that later. But in general, the the the, the tiny old men that they draw is really funny to me <laughs> whenever they show them. And yeah, I thought this was a pretty decent start of an intro one. It seemed to be very lighthearted, so I was like, oh, okay, this is just going to be a pretty lighthearted, like, jokey type of arc thing. And it gets progressively more serious as it goes near the end, but it keeps up the jokey attitude, I think, from this point forward. But how'd you feel about it, Zen? It was all right. It was, you know, this one was, like, kind of nothing. Yeah. Um, it was all right. It was just a lot of jokes back and forth, and then yeah. I thought the Shinpachi washing up on the island thing was funny, when he was like, oh god, <laughs> how am I supposed to have the worst summer vacation of my life? <laughs> um, that was pretty good. Mm. Uh, Kagura was funny in it, when she's just like, they find her just laying on the fucking beach with a leaf umbrella. Yeah, she seems to be uh, the, the the one that should have that actually has like the least to be embarrassed about what she ends up being embarrassed about. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I mean, I don't understand like the reference behind it, so I don't know if it's like that's a silly kid myth or something, and she hates looking like a little kid. So maybe I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I, I know I it's know a about the, the reference. Yeah, yeah, man. I keep forgetting. You haven't, I haven't actually watched very many Ghibli films, have you? Haven't watched what? Many Studio Ghibli films? I have not. Man, we should do a side series to show in an archive called Zen Watches Ghibli Films with Woki. Because <laughs> I will gladly talk about the the journey we can... You can experience the amazing um, experience that was in Japan where they released uh, My uh, My Neighbor Totoro next to Grave of the Fireflies as a double feature. Um 
And they learn that in no movie, com- when you pair it with Grave of the Fireflies, really like lessens how much of an emotional toll Grave of the Fireflies takes on the soul. <laughs> <laughs> because they said no matter how much we tried because the reason that they had to make it a double feature is that when they released when they showed grave of the fireflies by itself they said this movie is fucking rough <laughs> we have we have made a rough film and there's no way anyone's gonna pay to see it by itself so we need to put it with totoro so we'll show fireflies first and then we'll lead into totoro because totoro is like super happy and go lucky um when they did that it turned out a lot of people left after Grave of the Fireflies because they were emotionally drained <laughs> and they couldn't <laughs> handle watching any other movies. But then they did the opposite and they put Totoro first because Totoro actually started getting very popular. So they put Totoro first and they learned that the high that the happiness and the hopefulness of Totoro really gets crushed when you watch Grave of the Fireflies right <laughs> after it. So they had an issue where they were like, oh yeah, people were loving Totoro, and then all that like emotion, a lot of people just ended up leaving right afterwards because they heard that Gary the Fireflies was rough and they didn't want to, they just didn't want to deal with it right afterwards, Uh, so we could totally do a double feature of that, and I agree with them, there's no way to watch both of those movies back to back and not suffer through the most crazy whiplash you've ever um, experienced in your life. So yeah, maybe somewhere down the road we can do that when we both have actual time to watch okay. other things. That sounds miserable, but all right. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's going to be a, a a miserable. I don't think I've watched Grave of the Fireflies at least like three times. And every single time, it has left me emotionally uh, hollow by the end of it. It's just such a rough fucking movie to watch. <laughs> If you have never watched Grave of the Fireflies, it is one of my favorite movies. If I were to do a top ten, it would be one of the ten. Absolutely a must see if you are in any fan in any way a fan of anime. It is also maybe one of the roughest movies that you could watch imaginable. And I've seen a lot of rough fucking movies in my life. <laughs> I've seen a lot of rough ones. That one is a hard watch every single time I see it. But anyway. Uh yeah, so it's a reference to a Ghibli film. So there's a lot in general. This our entire arc is like I hope you brushed up on anything related to Japanese culture, or else you are going to be lost as fuck for the majority of it. That was me. I was lost as fuck for a lot of it. Man, well, thankfully I wasn't as because I was like, oh yeah, I, I know the story. So did you? Had you never heard of the story of Urashima Taro before seeing this arc? Nope. Really. That's, man, there wasn't, um, um, I'm trying to see now because I, this is a pretty popular, like, story. Try to see if there's any, like, variation of it you may have accidentally seen. You ever seen, there's a reference to it in Final Fantasy XIV, but it's a very loose reference. Fair enough, fair enough. You ever heard of Rip Van Winkle? Yeah, from Red Dead Redemption 2. It's basically the the similar story. (laughs) Okay, I don't know the story of it. I just know the name Rip Van Winkle because oh, Don Marston calls himself that in Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> okay. Well, we will... F- you know what? If, feel free to tell me in the comments down below where you heard of this story <laughs> because I just know I've heard of it. I want to say, like, for like most things, I heard it in Persona because a lot of my mythological like Japanese learnings come from Persona. But uh, maybe not this one. Anyway... Let's move on to episode 116, which is titled The Older, The Wiser. Go ahead, Zen. Tell us what it's about. So the uh, the turtles are, like, fighting everyone, and they, they're like, we got to hold on until um, Kintoki and them get here, and they show up, and they're just old, uh, and they're not any help, so they get thrown in prison, and... Um, they're trying to like they, they find out that the the pervert turtle is like a rebel who was trying to recruit heroes to stop this evil plan to to turn people old because the turtles are attacking the world and turning everyone old mm-hmm. um they're all arrested and they're up to to hijinks um and then the the rebel turtle is there and he he tackles the guard into the cell, and he's like, quick, grab his keys. 
and Kagura goes, oh, great job, and then she just jumps up and kicks the jail down <laughs> without getting the key. <laughs> um, they decide to... Uh, they're they're going to have to, like, stop the, the bad guys because... Um, Matsudaira is is in Ryugu Palace, just doing the exact same thing that he always does at like the hostess club, and so there the Shinsengumi aren't gonna help, so they're gonna do it themselves, and they uh, have to all like act like turtles, and they get uh, the scouter that lets them, <laughs> that lets this guy look at their power level. That's that's the next next the next episode. Oh, is it the next episode? Is this just the escape? Mm-hmm. This ends with um. Otahime and Otai having their confrontation, and then it's revealed that Otahime isn't young. She's old. Oh, yeah, when she... Okay, so she reveals herself as the old lady. And, yeah, her plan is that she... It's revealed that she wants to uh, make everyone on the Earth ugly so that she can guarantee she's the most beautiful creature on the planet. Mm-hmm. And then it ends with that reveal that she's old and she's an, ha- she's an old hag. And Otei, uh completely... I forget what what the what did she say? You there's you got more going wrong for you than just that hag. She's I don't think she calls her a hag. She calls her something though that was very like damn okay. I guess you could just call her that. I forget what she called it though. I remember looking at it going like okay, that's pretty crazy. All right, so that's this episode for this one. Let me see here if I've got any specifics about it. Um, this is the one where we reveal about this turtle guy's wife, which never gets resolved by the end. Never comes up again. Yeah. No real, uh, no real. So the, the wife he talks about is the, uh, there's a, there's a skeleton in the previous episode that is like put into carvings on the rock. How much days that it's been trapped there, I think. Uh, and then we revealed that was actually his wife. And he starts, like, talking about, like, no, no, she's just, like, she needs a lot of rest. She's, like, she's like very tired from trying to birth these eggs. So she needs to, like, really rest. She hasn't moved in a couple weeks, from what I can tell. But, you know, she's just getting really prepared to uh, give birth, I swear to you. Which makes this guy seem like he... Th- it's really weird that this never comes back up. Because this really does make it seem like he's kind of, like, insane. <laughs> Yeah, he seems out of his fucking mind. He does seem completely out of his mind. That's the only explanation we have for the skeleton, so we can only assume that either A, this is just a skeleton of a person and not his wife, and he's just trying to save face. B, that really is his wife, and he is unable to tell that she has died a long time ago, which makes him also seem just purely insane. Uh, But I did like that he tried to put a little uh, turtle shell on her back (laughs) to say, like, you need this for protection, dear. It was very dark. It was very, very dark compared to the rest of the <laughs> the series that it goes on. There's no joke that gets as dark as this one. Um, I, I, I think I remember them saying like, "Oh, um, Shinpachi, that's right." You know when he's like, "Oh, we just need to wait for Kentucky to show up, and then everything will be okay." And then Kentucky has like a version of his like intro where he's like doing a dramatic intro, but he's just an old man, so he's just like, "Oh," and he's just there. <laughs> Um, which is pretty funny. Um, I like, there's a bit in the prison guard where they start like doing an old man bit of like, oh yeah, back in my day, you know, cause he says like to kids, I think it's Katsar. He says like, uh, you kids today are too busy. You just want to stay in inside and play with your Famicom and your mega drive. Back in my day, we would go outside and play in the forest and then come home and play on Mega Drive. And Shibachi's like, immediately like, you're doing the same thing as us that you're accusing us of just doing. And then this starts this running gag of Kentucky just saying like, oh yeah, and you played Mega Drive back then too, Zura. And he keeps saying it, but he's saying it on a delay and it gets more and more delayed as time goes on. And he says it at the beginning of the next episode. He's like, that's... You're talking about a joke from the previous episode. Please stop trying, <laughs> you old man. Um, obviously, I like the bit where Kagura just completely takes down that uh, that door with her pure power. Because there's really... I, this is at the point where I was just realizing, like, yeah, they don't really need anyone more than QB Tay and Kagura for this. 
they could probably solo this entire adventure by themselves if it wasn't for them turning old near the end. Uh, just because they're so crazy powerful by themselves that I don't really, I didn't really feel like, yeah, you could probably have Gintoki be old for most of it. That it wouldn't have been that much of a problem up until some of the final things here. And yeah, that's about basically all I have for this one. This was basically one that just kind of moved forward the actual yeah, plot Yeah, this one was stuff. pretty forgettable. Yeah. The only thing that legitimately made me laugh was when Kagura kicked the door down after the guy did the big plan to get them the keys. Yeah, I think that was the, the best thing of it. It was just kind of a very much like, a, okay, and let's continue on to the next one. How much do you like enjoy hearing Katsura say Mega Drive? And I did enjoy hearing Katsura say Mega Drive. <laughs> <laughs> but I also preferred it when he said it when he was dressed up as Mario. <laughs> and he was talking about Famicom yeah, and stuff. It was, it was funnier when he was a Mario parody. Yeah. I do kind of like the voices that Katsura and uh, Gintoki are doing. Because they're completely different from their actual voice. <laughs> I think oh they, yeah, the old people voices they're doing? Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, they're pretty good. I also like it that the, the reason that Gintoki sounds the way he does is that he's supposed to he doesn't have any teeth. So he has dentures in. So that's why he's like weirdly because at one point Kagura is like, "What are you chewing on? Like, what are you eating in here?" He's like, "He's not eating. He doesn't have any teeth. He's just making noises." And she's immediately like, "No, nah, no, nah, open your mouth. I want whatever you're eating." He's like, "Leave him alone. <laughs> he's just a weird, gross old man. <laughs> he's just weirdly chewing. There's nothing to eat." So yeah. Now we'll talk about the next one because this next one actually has the scouter bit, which I liked. Let's move yeah, on. Yeah, bit was one of the better bits from the whole arc. Yeah, there's, um, a, there's a lot of Dragon Ball bits for sure in this one. Probably because of the turtle thing and the turtle Master, theme, yeah, Master Roshi. I think, uh, yeah, at some point, Katsura like, misremembers his youth <laughs> as like Goku instead. <laughs> yeah, he starts bringing it up as, like, I remember when we would carry Muten yeah, Roshi I on our carry back. Master Roshi with and, heavy turtle shell. <laughs> and also, we carried milk back and forth. Do you remember when we did that, Kentucky? He's like, that's... <laughs> You're you're taking a chapter from a very popular manga. That is not what happened in your life. <laughs> All right, let's move on to episode one seventeen, which is called "Beauty is Like a Summer Fruit." Go ahead, Zen. Tell us what's about. So they're gonna go rescue Tai, and they decide they're gonna divide up their fighting power evenly. So they're gonna use the Spouser, and the uh, Shinpachi's like, "That's just a scouter." from dragon ball and he's like no i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> not, i have no idea what you mean um they all have like weird denominations of their power like shimpachi is kelp and then hasagawa ends up having a higher kelp rating than him as long as he's wearing sunglasses and then if he's not it drops to a one mm -hmm. um uh uh, Cubase was boobs, like a boob rating. Yeah, it was an O, um, which was a, a rating of 7,930 boob rating. And, and then, then uh, the, the the best ones were the when he scanned old Gintoki and old Katsura, and like their power level kept dropping. <laughs> and it does that thing where the scouter gets like when they're too strong in Dragon Ball and the scouter explodes. <laughs> but it's that they're so useless. And at one point, I think um, Shinpachi even goes, how much of a burden are they? <laughs> they keep yes. going down. They're an insane um, burden. Yeah, so Kagura and Kibe start to climb the like fortress because they don't want to get stuck with the old men. And Shinpachi's like, hey, where are you going? And they start climbing faster because they're trying to bail on them. Yeah, they um, were supposed to divide into a group so that their power levels were evenly set, and then they yeah, immediately it's... abandoned them. <laughs> um, then the turtle and Hasegawa are like having this old guy moment where they're like, "I've thrown my life down before. Old soldiers like us should just die." <laughs> and they go to attack the enemy, and they miss completely and fall. Uh, they don't. They don't stop anyone. So Shinpachi is carrying old Gintoki and old Katsura and trying to run away. Um, Orohime decides that she's going to execute uh, Otai by dropping her in the water uh, where there's like sharks. Mm -hmm. um, they kind of have this back and forth about beauty again and then uh, they drop her in the water. We cut back to our boys and they find this guy in a capsule 
and Katsura's like, oh, my back, oh, and he sits down on a computer, which then um, ends up, like, playing this guy's story, basically, and it's a diary from Orohime about him, and how she's, like, waiting for him to come back and all this stuff. Yeah, so the um, originally the story that the, he tells him is the turtle, which is that a long time ago they were a kind of like a bro, like a brothel that would travel from place to place and would have the they were basically like a country all in themselves, even though they were just like a little palace. They were that powerful, but eventually she took this guy in and showed him like basically around, and she really liked him. She liked him a whole bunch. Um, but pr- the problem is, is that by the time that they came back to Earth, because of space travel, so many years had passed by that everyone that he knew and loved had died. So he didn't really see a point of living anymore because he had basically returned to a world where he just didn't know anyone and the entire world had changed around him. But he was still the same age, but he didn't know anyone. So he ends up, I think, killing himself or attempting to kill himself and, uh... The she was the 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 oh, I keep wanting to say Orihime. It's not Otahime. Ends up uh, putting their palace into the ocean as a kind of like repent uh, rep repent. No, that's not the right word. Why can I not say? As a way to say like I feel sorry for what I've done. She decides to put the palace in the ocean, and that's why repentance. this repentance. Right. Repent. Thank you. As a repentance. God, what is with my fucking <laughs> mouth? Either way, <laughs> she decides to sink the the palace down into the ocean so that something like that can never happen to someone again she feels very bad about it and then we learn through this that she actually found his body there was no way to actually recover um the body itself but she thinks that if she like basically remember mr freeze's wife she does that where she freezes it (laughs) yeah pretty much it's just mr freeze's wife yeah she hopes to one day see him again and then uh because she really had fallen in love with him and she was the only uh person that i think she says it a little bit later that um when he said you're beautiful a lot of people had used that line on her but for, for him specifically it's the only time it's ever mattered to her so she's just kind of waiting and hoping that one day she'll he'll wake up again and by the time uh he does that she'll still be as beautiful as she was when that happened that happened like three uh, three thousand years ago or so so a long ass time ago so there you go that is the whole basic setup of it we had skipped it because they had explained this actually in the previous episode but it didn't matter until this exact point (laughs) where we have to explain it now there you go continue on yeah that's uh yeah they find that in the thing there then uh, Otai gets dropped into the water um, with the sharks. But then Kagura, Kube, well, like, the, okay, there's like a pool of blood in the water. And uh, Orihime is like, ha ha, yeah, you fool. Um, they got you, you know, my the sharks killed you because you're mean to me or whatever. And then Kagura uh, and Kube apparently busted through the lower floor to then get in and like help and to, to free her and so when she pulls the rope back up because she's like yeah i want to see you know you're not beautiful now i bet now that you've been mauled by these sharks and she pulls it up and it's just another shark like in the rope that, that she beat the shit out of mm-hmm. um <clears throat> they attack her and she like narrowly avoids the attack and then um kagura and Kube are fighting off the the guards while Tai knocks out the last couple, and then her and Otohime end up fighting each other. Um, and she, uh, Otai wins, but then Otohime uh, lets the old person mist spread throughout the room, so it olds all the guards, and it also olds uh, Otai, but it doesn't old her because she's already old. Mm-hmm. That, that's the end of this one. Uh, okay, let me get into it. First of all, I really like this fight between them because it ended up being this. <laughs> they took it as like a, a beautiful fight of who can look the most beautiful while also fighting. So at the beginning, uh, Ota- Otahime is like slapping her and she's like, what is going on? Even if I slap her, it feels like eternal beauty. It feels like flowers are in the background. And then Tai gets like this like 
80 style, like, you think your weak slaps can make me ugly. And she immediately goes for a punch, and she gives, like, a super detailed, like, hit to the yeah, face. like a very, very detailed crack in the face. If you've ever played uh, Yakuza 0, it's like when Kiryu punches uh, uh, Kuze in the fucking face, and it's like a slow motion, like really detailed and then when she's on her stomach she immediately starts fucking wailing on her and as she's doing it and she's going like no it's, first of all she's hitting me like no you like you shouldn't hit somebody because she's immediately going for the face and that's the only thing she's targeting on her is her face as she continuously punches her as the fight goes on like they start doing this thing where it's like I know a way to make you look ugly while fighting and it's like um putting two fingers to the nose and then when she does that it reveals like uh tay is actually following a very famous like japanese celebrity and then when she try when tay is going to be doing the same thing to her except for she's going to do it with her toes instead of her fingers she pre- preemptively puts up a celebrity as well and it's like this random dude um and tay solves the situation by punching out that guy <laughs> in her imagination the imagined guy yeah she punches him out she's like what she went for him instead he's like trust me you're not gonna win this one <laughs> and she immediately starts wailing on him uh i liked the seeing tay fight uh her because they start to talk about a little bit more about like specifically the beauty standards because the reason that she even took tay at the beginning was that she just heard that she was very uh beautiful and that's the reason why she took her um and she's jealous of that idea as based off of the idea that she doesn't want anyone else to be more beautiful than her because she wants to be the most beautiful as beautiful as for when um that guy originally called her so she just can't accept that she exists but then today starts like leaning into it and saying like it doesn't matter how what you're doing here because even if you make every one of us ugly we will still win and we'll still be more beautiful than you just because the specific beauty standards that you got going for you right now it just doesn't work because your soul is ugly so no matter what you do even if you made the entire world ugly you would still be the ugliest person because your soul is just like not uh not right in 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 anything and that pisses her off enough and that actually kind of leans into what goes on in the final episode as well but it was nice seeing it set up a little bit more here uh in terms of the other side i did like hearing a little bit more of her specific plot because it's it's weird because when she's explaining it to tay she's in full like evil evil mode so she's just doing it as evilly as possible but when you get into the actual like diary of like when she originally started her plan you start to see that she how she was like before all this kind of started where she even mentions like taking the body and then like just making him wait like the so the specific solution that she's gotten which is that she's going to take this person who originally wanted to die because the world had changed too much around him and all his loved ones had died and that's the reason why he um he ended up dying as is for that specific reason but then her reasoning is is that she wants to take him and then wait for him to return and then like speak to him again and she realizes that this specific plan is going to be this exact thing he hates because she's basically putting him in a world that is even further from when he originally died so he even knows even less than when he started so it seems like she's actually just like hurting him again but for some reason she has to do this and i think a lot of it comes back to the idea that she can't stand that she fell in love with this person with this man and the reason he died was that he felt like he had no one left. But to her, it didn't make sense because to her, she was someone that still loved him. So he did still have someone, but maybe she felt like she wasn't enough or it wasn't anything like that. So it ends up being a little bit more like you can understand. I can at least understand why this specific thing is eating at her. Because it is very hard to like reason why if this person specifically died because they didn't feel like there was anyone that they loved was still there for them. If you love them so much, then how come they kind of left? And it's a very hard question to actually answer because it's not an actual ans- question that can be answered. It's just one of those things where it's like something in the back of your mind. It just kind of eats at you. And when you've been alive for as long as she has, which is like 3,000 years, that shit just eats away at you. And it, it it doesn't go. It's not one of those problems that is very easily solved because there's no real solution to it. So it just kind of eats away at you. So I could at least see why she was doing what she was doing, even if I think 
<laughs> the specific guard, she says, says at the beginning of this episode, this is a very stupid plan. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, yes, the, her entire idea being, like, if everyone is old, I'll be the only one that's beautiful. It makes no logical sense. But I think that the way that they've kind of delivered her here is that it's someone who has specifically had to have, like, this inner debate within themselves in which they felt like, I had I love someone, and then this person died because they didn't feel like there was anyone left to, that loved them in this specific world. But I was there. So... It just does like the the specific conflict in your mind just isn't there, but it's a little bit deeper than that because obviously the person who was suffering from that is obviously going to be going through a lot of other things, like just the pressing the very idea. Even if there was like for example, Zen, let's say we go into sixty years in the future and everyone I know and loved had died, but it was just you that was there left. Even though you were there, I would still suffer from the immense shock of losing everyone else. <laughs> it would yes. be too much. Um, and that specific thing is a very human thing of like, you don't think about the person that you have left when you're just dealing with that much grief. So I felt I was able to see through a lot of that for this. And, uh, I thought it was very funny that this very silly arc had this specific kind of like dichotomy in the background as I'm going, like, as I'm thinking about it, like, oh yeah, this specific, very human thing. And then I, while this is, while I'm thinking about this and while this is happening, Tay's fucking just punching her in the face nonstop. Yeah, just trashing her the whole time. Just like, bah, bah, just, yeah, it's a very loving dichotomy that I've loved, I've learned to love from Gintama of like this, it's the the ideals that they put forth and then the silly shit that also happens that in this same episode where I'm talking about this specific like human interaction is the same one where QB asked for her boob rating to be changed to penis because she doesn't need to be looked down <laughs> as a female. <laughs> Give me the penis rating instead. <laughs> yeah, let's just say change it to penis. <laughs> Should we please change it to penis? <laughs> I'm asking you. That I think she, I think she said, are you trying to make fun of me as a warrior? I don't need boobs. Change it to penis, <laughs> which is a good bit. Which is a good bit. But yeah, that's what I specifically liked in terms of the more dramatic side of it. In terms of the jokes, obviously the scouter bit is very funny because we're big fans of Dragon Ball, and this bit was very funny when they're talking about power scaling. It's really funny because they they talk about how useless this is, but because the the rating is based off of kelp. He says, like, oh, well, the way we can actually counter this is that we just give them a bunch of kelp, and that will increase their rating. And then Shippachi goes, like, what's the point of this? <laughs> what is the point of this power scale if you could just get more kelp, and that changes your scale? And then Kaku yeah, goes, I also like how he was like, uh, kelp doesn't have fighting power. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. And when Hasegawa is giving the one kelp rating when he doesn't have the sunglasses, he's like, does that mean that I'm not even human? It means that when I don't have the sunglasses... <laughs> The sunglasses, I'm not even human. I'm a fucking kelp. That's it. So I like that. Um, and I think... Also, I forgot in the first episode, the funniest joke in the entire arc, which is when Hasegawa catches the fish for Otai. And he's like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a sea man. I can, uh, can catch us at whatever we need. And she's like, wow, it's really amazing. And he's like, yeah, no, I know I am. And she's like, yeah, it's, it's amazing how God gives gifts even to the most worthless of people. <laughs> And he's like, oh, you were praising God. Not, not me. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a very good bit. Uh, and yeah, and I also like the bit where he gets chased off, where they're talking like, oh yeah, I was prepared to die. And then Shibachi's like, I'm the one with the people who look like they're about to die. <laughs> like every time they make a med they make a reference to say like, ah, oh, we're just so old. He's like, I have the two useless old people right here. Both of you shut the hell up. <laughs> Don't leave me behind. Yeah, they're like us old soldiers. And he's like, no, the old soldiers are back here with me. <laughs> so yeah, I liked, uh, I liked that bit. I ended up really liking this episode, as you can tell from the, the thoughts I had about it. And no, of course, there's also the bit where Katsura just mentions the, the Roshi bit, which is really funny to me. That is, Katsura's mind starts to wander what he does versus what Goku and Krillin do. Basically, he sees himself and Gintoki as the Goku and Krillin in this yeah, situation. He, he says Gintoki was there, too. He's like, yeah, don't you remember that, Gintoki? Yeah, and it's also really funny because he's actually like big like Goku is, and Gintoki is small like Krillin <laughs> is. <laughs> So I thought it was very fitting. How'd you feel about this episode, Zen? Uh, it was 
the best one so far. I think the the finale is the best one of, of all of them. But mm. this one was also good. It started off this arc kind of started as like what what am I doing here? <laughs> like what mm. what is this? But it did get pretty good. Um, I liked Otai and her fight. I like that uh, everyone got olded except for Shinpachi. Like at the last minute, there was a nice like all hope is lost moment because they basically just flooded the palace with the old gas, mm. the, the oldie mist. Um, it was good. It was it was it was solid. Yeah. And now let's talk about the final episode. Which is going to be for this arc, not in the for Gintama in general. Which is episode one eighteen. Even if your back is bent, go straight forward. <laughs> which is a pretty funny one. Go ahead, Zen. So they, uh, Katsura and Gintoki read the diary thing on the computer, and they're like, "Oh, you know, she she lived a hard life, and her her positive, loving feelings have turned poisonous." In uh, in all this time, uh, um, and you know what? We have to. We should go and we should go and help her. And like as they're leaving, uh, Shimpachi sees them like as their normal selves, as, like their young selves. Um, and they're on the way to get to the cannon because they, or no, they're just going to help her. And then they're outrunning these turtle guards because they're also old. So they're all just like old man shuffling down the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's when she realized I shouldn't have actually released the gas in the air. Yeah, I shouldn't have made them all old. Um, and then they start like speed, speed old man walking, and they're like leaving a cloud of dust, but they're still just doing the old man shuffle where they don't like pick their feet up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, they they end up running into the guards who are not old, and they're like, "We're gonna stop them here," and then they go up the walls. Like, they're, like, on a skateboard, like, going up the walls, but they're just old man shuffling. Um, Shimpachi catches up because it turns out that the the dead guy is, like, in the computer, and he gives them he gives them this antidote. He's got the antidote missile. And he's like, you gotta put this in the cannon, and that'll save it. Um, that'll, that'll counteract it. It's like a vaccine. And so he runs up to Katsura and Gintoki to give it to them so they can all go together. Um... And Katsura keeps going like, all right, we just got to put this in the butt. <laughs> He's like, please, <laughs> nothing to do with butts. There's no butts in this. Um, they make it to a like big spiral staircase up to the cannon, and they're getting chased by Orohime, and all of our, our heroes keep showing up to stop her, like the... The turtle and old Hasegawa grab her by the legs to try to stop her, and then uh, old Kagura and old Kube show up to help. And old Kagura is like really tiny. She is, and she's like, "Where's my breakfast?" And she's like, "You already had breakfast." And she's like, "Oh, where's my lunch?" <laughs> she's like, "You already ate." And she's like, "I don't care." And then old Kube is there, and she's like a an annoyed old lady. And I, the, one of the funniest bits, I think, is when she calls her son. <laughs> she's on the phone and she's like talking to her imaginary son. And uh, then Kagura picks up the fake phone and also calls Kubei's imaginary son and is like, "Can you bring me my food on your way home from work?" It's like, don't bother uh, your son with your food orders. Yeah, she's like, don't bother her son with your food requests. Um. And so they're they're trying to get the the bomb up to the end. Um, eventually they do, and they load it into the uh, the cannon with like this big fucking device thing. And uh, Orohime jumps on it, and then they jump on her to try to stop her, and it ends up knocking the antidote down, and the cannon fires without them loading the antidote in. But the antidote missile breaks when it hits the ground, um, and that sprays the antidote out, and it returns Gintoki and Katsura to their normal ages, and they both, like, golf hit the antidote <laughs> missile into the cannon. Let's aim for the butt. Um, yeah, let's aim for the <laughs> butt. And then, yeah, because when, they, when they're old and they're carrying it, Katsura goes, all right, Gintoki, all we have to do now is put this in the butt of the cannon. <laughs> <laughs> um... 
they they knock it in and it fires the antidote because the um the cannon like explodes when they knock it in there and it shoots the antidote out uh and uh it saves everyone because it hits the giant cannonball that was shot um and it like blows it up and it it lands as the antidote instead um, part of the cannon falls on Otohime, and she's like, everyone, you know, you've you've inspired me. Everyone, get out of here. Run away before you die. And uh, our, our crew decides they're going to try to save her. Um, as they're lifting it off, all the turtle men are running away, and they're like, we can't, we can't disobey her final command. We have to get out of here. And the guy's like, well, I'm a turtle rebel. <laughs> I don't have to listen to her commands. So all of her little men are like, you know what, we're going to be rebels too. Let's save her and get out of here. And they do end up saving her. And then we cut to... Um, Kondo and uh, Hijikata, who are like at a little like restaurant. They're at like one of those little... It's not like a full it's, restaurant. It's, you know, like a, it it's, like a, it's like a little tiny bar almost. Like, yeah, it's like a... It's, it it's like literally a just like a bar that you sit at and you just get like a little bit of food. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Again, if and, you ever played Yakuza, it's where all the mamas are from. It's where you just kind of yeah. sit down. It's one of those places where you just sit down to have a drink, maybe get yeah. some food. It's not like a big thing. But here you go. And, uh, yeah, so they, uh, they're in there, and Kondo is uh, drunk, and he's very depressed because he doesn't have a woman. Uh, and then he's talking to the old lady who runs the stand, and she's like, all you have to do is tell them that uh, that they're beautiful. And he's like, nah, that's cheesy. It would never work. Um, and then apparently the guy who was in the freezer capsule like wakes up from the crash. That like that like that's what wakes him up. Yeah, yeah, we uh, see him he, fall into the abyss at the end. Yeah, but he into barely the ocean. survived. Yeah, and then he he shows up there, and it turns out that the old woman who runs the stand is Orohime, who uh, titles her shop after the the name of the palace. Yeah, and you, we get a smile from her, and the episode ends. And we get a, the the ED set to all the adventures here, which I yes, can now it's the same ED, but it's got the the adventures to it. Yeah, which I'll say that this ED is maybe one of my favorites now. Maybe it helps that it was set to this, but I think it actually really feels like set to this specific arc. There's like a fun poppiness to it that I enjoy, <laughs> and also like when it says "fly, fly," doop, 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 doop. it's really good. Anyway, let me tell you what I feel about this episode, Zen. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I really like the end of this arc. I think it ends up being one of these ones arcs where it starts really slow, but then by the end of it, I was just like really just into it and enjoying it. Uh, I like the bit where there are, she's being like bombarded by all the useless old people that she assumed would be perfectly easy, but I think she even makes mention that even when she's old, Kagura is like stupid strong. <laughs> yeah, she's like on her face like, oh my god. Why is, so strong? <laughs> Why is this old person so unbelievably strong? Uh, I like that bit right there. I like the bit where when um, Gintoki and uh, uh, Katsura are like in a crazy like hyper speed. Shinpachi is running at normal running speed and is able to catch up with them very easily. <laughs> yeah. It's like not hard for him to catch up with them at all. I like the bit where Gintoki and Katsura are talking to themselves, and Gintoki's, like, saying to Katsura, like, are you still, like... They're speaking specifically in a way that's, like... Because up until this point, they've been very, very useless and have not been helpful in any kind of way. But Gintoki starts talking to Katsura about, like, if he still has it kind of in him to uh, to walk forward when his back is, like so bent uh bent out of shape and he's like i still know the way to walk forward and in that moment you see that like that flash where uh um shinpachi sees them as like their old selves which kind of goes back to the part where it's like the the soul of themselves is still true to who they are even though that they're now useless old people but deep down they are still like in tokyo and they're still katsura so when it actually comes time to matter they're still going to be who they are and they're still going to be as helpful as they can be even though at this point they're though i say it's not very useful they they do end up doing a lot of good bit for a very old men 
they do yes. a very good job. They accomplish quite a bit, actually. Yes. Uh, I also like the bit where they're, like, running, and they're, like, outrunning them. And then they're also, like, running on the sides of the, <laughs> of the building <laughs> to outrun them. Yeah, when they go up, like, it's, like, a, like a tunnel. Yeah, I thought that bit was very good. Um, I like when they return to their youth, and Gintoki immediately mentions the butt, because uh, I thought it was funny. Um, I like the bit where the... You get to see uh, Yurishima talk to um, uh, Shinpachi as, like, the robot, where he starts talking. Not a robot, but he's basically in the ship's computer just because he's been there for so long, and she's been waiting for him to come back for so long that uh, he just kind of integrated himself with the the system itself. And he starts talking about, like, uh, I can't see it this way. No matter what, here's the vaccine. Please save her. Like, this is the only way, like, what she's, he realizes that what she's doing isn't right, and he also realizes that he's, she's doing this specifically because of him, so he wants it to be kind of course corrected, and, uh, please save her if you can. Uh, and then, of course, I like the big moment at the end where she comes to realize, like, I thought I knew about the beauty and everything, but I think I finally see here basically at the end where she's like i don't because the whole place is falling apart and it's gonna fall into the sea where she's just like just let it fall this this is it there's really nothing else here so she's just kind of given up she's like i don't think i'm ever gonna see him again this was this entire thing was to see was the with the hope of the idea but i don't think i really have it in me to wait anymore because i've waited long enough and it's just not happening so she's kind of just reserved herself and she's realized at the end like what i was trying to do wasn't the right thing and i've let my soul basically be corrupted but i'm at least happy that here at the end i was able to at least see the error of my ways no please leave um and she's like and she tells him to get away because the the bar that she's stuck under is just like too much and they're not going to be able to lift it and then i of course love the the big hero moment where kentoki is revealed to where it looks like she's about to suffer from a uh, side character death as so many side characters have died yeah i really was like oh there it is there it is but then no kentoki <laughs> says <laughs> says no <laughs> you live this time <laughs> and he has this big hero moment where he stops it from the back and it stops it from killing her and they basically tell her like just live it's it's you know what what he cared most was the style like the the reason that you've been alive for so many years the reason that you were able to hear his words and remember his words because for the longest time she's not when she was fighting tai she's like she doesn't understand why these specific words and why this specific man has she's cared about so much because over the years there's been so many that have said the same thing to her and it just doesn't hit the same way and he says the reason is is that for one brief moment he didn't see he wasn't saying that you were beautiful he was saying that your soul was beautiful and that's the thing that he loved and that's the reason why it's resonated with you for so long is because you had never heard of that before so he says even if all this is all is even if he's gone and everything else has gone to shit you should at least try and live your life and smile for him because that's what he would have wanted anyway. So they have a nice big hero moment where everyone goes in to save him. And even when this is like having an emotional beat, I also like that they take the time out to shit on Hisagawa for a bit as uh, Kagura punches him for no reason. <laughs> if, if, he, if he even says, like, why am I getting hit? <laughs> like, this is no reason for this. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're able to save her. And yeah, I like the the bit at the end where Kondo is... I thought it was actually a very good bookend because she had a lot of heart-to-heart with Tay. Not heart-to-heart, but heart, more like fist-to-fist, woman-to-woman talk about like <laughs> the specific beauty things. And she actually runs into the person that uh, loves Tay so much because of the way that she's able to look past so many of the negatives on a person. <laughs> because again... Yeah. As we we need to remember that Tay is the ultimate woman because she doesn't care about the hair a hairy ass. She only cares about the, the soul of the man who has the hairy ass. So it's the only woman Kondo has a potential shot with, but it's also the only woman that doesn't want anything to do with Kondo. Yeah, absolutely detests Kondo. So it's real funny to see him kind of just interact there for a bit. And then I also like how Kondo is very clearly drunk. And when he asks, like, please marry me, Mamba, she's like, I already have a man in my life. And he goes like, liar, don't lie, don't brag to me, old hag. (laughs) (laughs) Don't you brag at me, you old hag. 
which is really funny. And then, yeah, I like that uh, that uh, the dude was able to escape the freezer capsule, and he's able to say see her one final time. And he still sees that she's as beautiful as he was when he saw her so many years ago. And then it was a nice little smile at the end, which is a good way of ending it. Of like, because usually when there's a reunion like this, there's a lot of tears. But I actually like that she met him back with just a smile, because that's probably the most thing that she would have wanted. And it actually was a legitimately very nice smile, actually. Because up until this point, she's been kind of depicted as like, as they said, like old hag. But when you see her smile here at the end, she actually just looks like a very nice old woman. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't look like a monster anymore or anything. Yeah, it's so it's a funny way to show it, but I thought it was actually a very nice like way of smiling and showing it off and showing like a, a beauty that exists that is soul deep and is not a physical one. Because yeah, it was pretty nice. So yeah, yeah, I like I like I like the ending of this one. Apparently, oh. also trivia wise, this is the. Only the second episode of the whole series so far where Kondo and Hijikata have appeared, but uh, Okita has not. Really? <laughs> That's yeah, funny. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, I guess there's no reason for Okita to be here. He'd be too busy, uh, I don't know, doing masochist stuff, going to go fight, trying to figure out ways to kill Hijikata. Like, he's got other stuff to do on his plate. No, he's the sadist. Uh... No, that's right. Sachan is the masochist. My bad. <laughs> My apologies to all the big masochist and sadist fans out there for getting the wrong <laughs> characters mixed up. But yeah. Cutting into our viewer base. Exactly. I know what our viewers are into. Don't worry. By the way, now that Kondo's here, I should mention that someone brought it up to me. Apparently, you remember the bit where Kondo got his uh, 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 penis stuck in the hole? Yeah. Uh, apparently in the manga, when he gets it stuck, th- the the faces are there. <laughs> they they turn the faces back for the anime. <laughs> but in the manga, the faces are there when he's stuck. That's really funny. It is. And I read that, I was like, oh my god. I can see why they can't do that in an anime. <laughs> but in a manga, that's perfectly okay to do for a gag. But yeah. I yeah, I like this episode. I think it's probably the best one of the four. It's a good payoff for everything that was kind of getting set up. And it's also funny when you see, like, the ending bit, how silly this whole thing began. Because they show, like, the gamma a bit, and I'm like, yeah, that's right. This arc did start with all of that. Yeah, with some really dumb shit. Yeah, I, for- I had almost forgotten uh, by the end of this one. But, yeah, that's how I feel. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, it was good. It was a little cute ending. Um. It was weird going to all of this after, like, the fucking ridiculous opening that was, like, nonsensical. Um, mm. But it was good, and it was just kind of a nice little heartwarming tale. There wasn't a ton of depth to it. I mean, it was a pretty standard, like, don't be a shitty person, and you should love someone for who they are, or not for if they're attractive. But uh, it was still it was still nice. It was cute. Yeah. Yeah. This is a fun little, like, adventure, summer adventure time kind of tales, where it just ends up being, like, a happy ending, which is nice, because considering the last time we had an arc, how unbelievably depressing that ended. Yes. Just, like, where the answer was, like, sometimes you can't save someone, sometimes a family is just broken, and it just ends there, and it's like, well, fuck, man. What what, yeah. what 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 am I supposed to do? <laughs> like what what do you? It's nice Man, to have where's my positivity here. Yeah, where's my you know where's something? I really like. There's also stuff like this where it's just like no, this is a lot of hopefulness in here, and there's a lot of just like yeah, like it's you know you could make the case of like I guess he somehow was able to survive, but at the end of the day, like I just want a happy ending, and I'm perfectly fine with just having a happy ending, and we're good here and. Everyone's happy and we have a nice send off. Again, compared to just how bleak again, making the 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 exception here of Totoro and <laughs> for Grave of the Fireflies, sometimes you just need the Totoro of a happy good feel ending <laughs> to counterbalance <laughs> the darkness that comes with some of the stories that you hear and stuff like that. So perfectly fine little uh four episode arc here for for summer times. And yeah, that's it for this week of Gintama. Uh, let's see what we've got for next week. Next week we have... We should be going through episodes 119, 120, 
121, 122, and then 123, which is five episodes. And then we will be... No, and then next week after that... Wait, wait a minute, because I have to be sure on this one before I make any... So yes, okay, so next will be 119, 120, and then 121, 20, 122, and 123 is another mini arc called the Monkey Hunter arc, which I assume is... Anytime I hear Hunter, I assume it's some kind of Hunter x Hunter reference, but we'll see what it is. And then after 123, we have episodes 124, 125, 126, 127, 128, which is another mini arc. It's going to be really weird because we're going to be off balance, but I think eventually it just kind of like... It'll sort eat. itself out. Yeah, it will sort itself out. We'll have a big... Um... Okay, yeah, it will sort itself out with... Yeah, we have to figure this out. We we might have to watch two extra episodes on uh, from two weeks from now because there's another four episode arc, and for that one, it should probably be by itself. So we'll keep that one kind of separated from the rest of them. But we'll figure that out in two weeks' time, and I'll make sure to tell ahead of it. But for now, the next it's another five episodes for next week, and we should be able to hopefully get it done because I saw my schedule. It's not going to be too busy for me. So I'll be able to easily make that for next week. So, thumbs up, everyone. Time to do the ending bit for the show where I say thank you very much for watching, everyone. We appreciate it. Um, If anything, if you ever want to show any kind of appreciation for the show, you can always just keep on watching. That helps a whole bunch. Comments also are nice to just see and stuff like that. Um, but if you don't have anything to say, don't worry about it. Watching about it is good enough. Sometimes I, I always feel this way because I'm someone who watches a lot of YouTube videos and just doesn't say anything because for the most part, I'm just here to kind of enjoy and watch, you know what I'm saying? So I know that feeling when the, when the YouTuber says, please leave a like and comment. I'm the one who leaves a like and then doesn't comment (laughs) because I just don't. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I understand that. It does help a whole bunch, but you know what? Being here and watching is good enough for us. Um, And you can watch more Zen over on his channel where he does uh, Shonen and Chill. Now, let me ask you. I think the people are asking, and by the people, I mean me. What is the status of Shonen and Chill now that you are legitimately catching up to One Piece? Your thoughts, Zen, currently. This is the big changeover from last two weeks is that Zen has been... Uh, reading One Piece at a pretty a brisk pace, I want to say. I was so, what, so just what are my thoughts on One Piece? Or? No, what are your thoughts about eventually adding One Piece <laughs> to Shut It and Oh, uh, Oceans would have to read it, which is never going to happen. God damn it! Fuck, we were so close! Never so, going to happen. Uh, no. Yeah, I can't even get him to read Yosakura Family, which is only like 120 chapters. Oh, uh, fuck. We were so close, everyone. This one bit is going to be... St- <laughs> never well, gonna happen how are you enjoying it at least uh it, it's pretty hot and cold um mm. i really like parts of it like you know ein's lobby was crazy good or any's lobby or whatever it's pronounced that any lobby um, is what i call it yeah it's uh was super good thriller park was pretty ass um what are you talking about brooks it's, it's very up and down brooks. um i i am told that this is going to be uh, uh, where i am right now is going to be very bad um, and then it becomes very good because I think I'm I think I'm about to read um, Marine Ford or Marin Ford or whatever. Yeah, you're getting um, pretty close to it. So I'm I'm told that is incredible, but then we have like Fishman Island, which apparently is atrocious. So we'll Ye- see. Yeah, F- Fishman has to do the unfortunate job of like establishing that everyone is really. Um, actually, I just remembered. How did? Mm, well. Mm, I'll say that it's not as bad as when my hero tried to tackle race. I think <laughs> I think my hero is now officially the gold standard for what was he cooking in terms of handling of race issues. So in that case, I, yeah. think, I think Oda does a little bit of a better job, at least making it slightly more nuanced than that. Uh, yeah, obviously not a lot of people like Thriller Bark. I like Thriller Bark because it has a spooky I like setting. Thriller Bark on, on like certain moments of it like uh the actual arc itself i was like this fucking sucks but like when zoro takes all of luffy's pain and he's just standing there like yeah. fucked up and he's like whatever i was like that was raw that and cool. uh i like halloween so all the yeah. silly halloween enemies i was like oh this is kind of neat 
I also really like um, Brooks's backstory as well. I like Brooks in general. Yeah, think... Brooks is good. I like yeah. Brooks. Um, have you actually gone to see the the anime version of the song? Because they actually sing the song in the anime. Uh, no, I did not watch them sing the song. You should. Uh, I would say go check out Bing Sake because I've used it before. I think for when we've talked about One Piece stuff in old podcasts, it because I really love that specific song. I think the person that they got for books is actually like a legitimate singer. Um, and who's also a voice actor. To be fair, a lot of Japanese voice actors are both singers and, uh, voice actors at the same time. It's just something that you do, I guess, in Japan, multi-talented. Um, but he also has, like, specific, like, songs. I think we have one character that you meet later on is based off of a song that the voice actor made. And he actually has Brooks sing it later on in the anime, like, so many episodes later. He actually gets to sing the song um, in it, which I thought was a pretty cool, uh, nice little moment. But yeah, I really like Brooks. I think he's still one of my favorite uh, straw hats. But yeah, it's been fun seeing you actually go through it and read the the manga because you finally got over the, the, the hump, basically. And now you're into the mini humps as you go through some of the stuff as it gets hot and cold and hot and cold. Yeah, it seems like it's going to stay that way for a while of just like, hmm. This was really good. Oh, it's ass. <laughs> like, <laughs> endlessly. Yeah, yeah. It, it it definitely has a lot of that feeling, but the, those ups are usually what are really good. Yeah, Actually, some of those ups were uh, were crazy. Yeah, it, it so. is, in a weird way, kind of reminds me of watching Dragon Ball Z back in the day, but with the filler. Where, like, occasionally some of the filler would... Which is really funny, because there's One Piece filler as well. <laughs> oh, God. But, uh... That's also another conversation you would have for later. But it does remind me a little bit where it's like occasionally a filler which just would not hit. And I was like, ah, whatever. But it's still Dragon Ball at the end of the day. And those crazy highs of like Goku going Super Saiyan outweigh a lot of the negatives as I kind of go through it and stuff like that. So yeah, I'll be interested to see why the end of it when you catch up. We'll, we'll, we'll see if by next week you've gone any further. If uh, if there's a sh- the one piece update since the people in and Shonen and Chill are not going to be able to experience the the Zen thoughts in Shonen and Chill, they can at least enjoy it here in Shonen Archive. <laughs> <laughs> the the allure of Shonen Archive. Yes. Then talking about One Piece. Eventually, like this is for all the people who waited like an hour into it to hear some of Zen's thoughts on One Piece as he goes <laughs> through it. <laughs> It's all going to be leading up to when we finally actually start watching one. Yeah, that old D free declaring saying, "When do you guys going to start watching One Piece?" <laughs> Who knows? Maybe someday. There's more episodes of One Piece than out. I think there's actually there over a thousand. <laughs> so I don't know if we would be able to. I think we would actually die by the end of it. Um, I think out One Piece would outlive both of us in terms of anime length. I don't know if we'd be able to do it, but there is like probably there is like I think cut up versions that kind of just show the bits of it, the best bits of it, or something. But I don't know. We'll figure it out. I think in the spirit of the show, it'd have to be all one thousand, but that's a larger conversation to be had later. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Check out Zen and his channel. If you want more of my channel, you can stay on here. Did you enjoy me talking about a mythological figure from Japan? Then let me tell you about Fake Grand Order. It has nothing but mythological characters from Japan's history. Most of them turned into women, but some of them still men. So check it out. (laughs) Check out any video featuring Fake Grand Order. It's what helps me keep Shonen Archive going, because those videos do so well (laughs) that it lets me be able to do Shonen Archive. And yeah, that's it for this week, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. We will see you guys next week. Unfortunately, we might be a little bit delayed. We have to figure out if we're going to be, how we're going to do Jujutsu Kaisen because Zen's busy. So we can't do that right now. But we'll see if we can do that a little bit later in the day. So it won't be up on Sunday, but it will either be another week from now or maybe a little bit later in the week. Who knows? We'll play it by ear, right, Zen? We still It'll have, be around. Yeah. We still need to figure out a time for us to play some uh, UMVC3. Now's the perfect time. Yes, we do. Stream it for 12 hours. We may as well. Just <laughs> we still have to do Digimon World, but after Digimon World, uh, do a UMVC3 stream where it's just me trying to beat the ultimate boss of getting a single win 
in Ultimate Marvel vs. <laughs> Capcom. Like, I've, I have to start practicing, actually. Maybe I have to have a training arc off-screen where I start just playing a lot of UFPC 3 to practice. I still need to find a team. That's my one thing, is I think I need to find a team of three dudes, and then I think I need to be able to, like, like hone in, figure out some stuff to do with them, and then I think I can handle Zen. Eventually. At least down the way. Alright, alright. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. But yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace!